Welcome back to part 19 of creating a 2D uh, platformer game using LibGDX. Um, today what we're going to be doing is using a little bit of a parallax um, uh, scrolling effect for our background so it gives us a little bit of depth. We're actually going to be using a sprite based version of it to kind of simulate layers where you can't actually use the real layers because we're using a two-dimensional game. So um, just before we get started, um, I wanted to let you guys know, as you can kind of see here, that we are going to be using a video of what we've actually been doing because I recorded without sound, which is great. Um, so hopefully I'm going to be giving you guys more commentary this time than anything else. So as we get started, I've already edited level one, and I've added trees. And you're going to notice that there's going to be three different elements to the trees. Um, you're going to have tree, you're going to have the X, the Y, and the size. So I'm going to actually be showing you guys um, how to scale as well. So we're going to be scaling these trees um, using the same image. This is the image of the tree. As you can kind of zoom in, you kind of see um, it kind of has like that acne mark on it to kind of make it look like uh, real bark. Um, again, I'm not the greatest pixel artist, but I get by. Um, so we have that pretty, pretty tree. Um, and I have them all in these locations here. My main goal is to get the tree to move at about half the rate of the, um, or, or making it look like half of what, uh, of how the guy is moving. So the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to move the trees with the character. Since we're moving the camera and the character at the same time to make everything else move, we're going to move the character, um, um along with it. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually just checking to make sure that the um, screen, uh, making sure it's 64 by 64 pixels. Um, and this, because what I was going to do is I need to scale it and I wanted to make sure it's like 6 times 64 actually gives us the correct uh, width and height of our particular tree. So, um, Anyway, that doesn't really matter too much to you guys right now. So what we're going to do is going to go into here to start. And we are going to create a tree. And we are it's going to be a game object, so we're going to do extend game object. So we're going to add the unimplemented methods. And I'll get back to my point of uh, um, creating that parallax effect uh, when we get to it. Um, but before we actually create there, we do need to go into our texture manager. I think I did mess up on this one like twice. Um, I will get to the, the main um, thing. I've actually combined it two videos here. So we're going to create a texture. Or so tree .e, uh, new texture gdx.files.internal sprite tree.png. Okay, I double check to make sure it's tree.png. Put the semicolon and then make sure I dispose of my tree when I'm done with it. I'm going to hit save. So I have my dispose, my cleanup, and I have all three major files. So that's great. The next thing I need to do is go over here and I need to create my constructor. So I do, I'm going to do, actually I created my sprite first. Okay, I created my sprite for it, public tree. I guess I'm going slow, public tree, and I'm going to be taking in three variables this time, the X, the Y, and um, my size. So remember I had three elements there in my level one, so that's why I need, and that's why I need that. So I'm going to first create the sprite, so I'm going to do sprite equals new sprite texture manager dot tree, semicolon, and then I am going to resize it. So the way we're going to resize, we're going to do screen dot set size. I know you guys see the set scale there, but uh, we're going to set the exact size that we're looking for. So 64 by 64 was the tree, so we're going to do 64 times size, and that should scale everything proportionally. Then we have um, set position x and y. Perfect. So we're going to come over here to set position. We're going to do sprite dot set position. X and Y, perfect. Um, and then we're going to do draw or sprite dot draw sprite batch. So this right here looks exactly like the bushes. 
so far. Um, we will be doing stuff with other things like move left and move right, um, but we'll get to that in just a second. We want to make sure that we're loading everything correctly as well. So we're going to come up here um, and we are going to only take, so the um, we want to draw these before we draw the first background, so we're going to call this second background. And if you want to create create something of a clever, more clever name, go ahead to do it, um, or a simpler name. Uh, I don't understand why I did it this way, but I was not very clever when it comes to variable names. So we're going to come over there, so we have a brand new um, array. So we're going to create another. Um, we're going to create another branch here. So we're loading the tree up. We're going to load the tree up in the second background. And it's going to be tree. And we're going to need to take in three integers. So we're going to copy this code in here, this parsing of the integer, of the strength of the integer. So we're going to copy that once, comma, twice, comma, three times, comma. So we're taking in three different integers um, every single time. And that's just, and that's just how we're going to do that. Um, and that takes in the size. The third element is the size. So we've talked about that quite a bit. Then we're going to go over here to main game. And pretty much we're going to do the, we're going to create another for each loop in here that draws it. So we're going to do second background. And then you're going to do t dot draw batch. And then I'm going to copy and paste this over into our low, um, our next level code. Same place. I'm going to hit save. When we run this now, we should see the trees being drawn, but it doesn't have any. It it has the same kind of effect that the grass has or the bushes have. Like it moves with the character. Now moving with the character is okay, I guess. But it's not what we really want. We, the trees are farther away than the bushes. So in order to do that, we need, the, uh, we need to move the bushes with us. So when we move left, we need to move the, the bushes left as well. Um, but the thing is, is we want them to kind of lag behind. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the, the trees move half the speed as the character. So if the character is moving 200, and I think I'll go to it eventually, uh, if the character is moving 200, then the trees will move 100 in the same movement. So we're going to go to move left and move right, and we're going to have that. But before we do this, um, we're going to check on the character, because I already knew that cool guy moved at 200, but I didn't know it when I recorded this. So I went on here and checked, checked, um, checked out my move right and my move left. So that's my speed of 200, and there's my set position. So I'm going to steal this particular code. See, stolen. And go in here. I'm going to paste it into the left, and there's the speed. And we don't have hitboxes. That's why. Um, that's why. I have those two errors there, so I'm correcting that by getting the sprites X. And then I'm going to come over here to full. I'm actually pointing with my hand, which is kind of funny. Uh, okay, so I, I change the speed, and then I'm going to change this full here to sprite.getY, because I don't want to change the Y coordinate of these things. That would be silly. So that's that. The only difference between move left and move right is the plus. So I hit a plus there. And, yeah, so I make sure that the speed is 100, which should be exactly half of the speed of Cool Guy. So, going into that. So, since I have that already, I need to go find any place I move to the left or the right. So, right here I found the keyboard, and right here is where I have the mouse input. So I need to make sure I do this for both. So for all my game objects, so for all my game objects in second background, 
I am going to need to move them left. So T dot move left delta. And we're going to be using the GDX dot graphics dot get delta time. Bam. So I need to do this when I move left. I need to move right. So I need to change that to right. Done. And now I need to do it for the touches. So, or the touch buttons. So I just copy and paste in there. The the other the top one was a right already. So that one's a or a left already. So that one was fine the way it is written. So now if I run this, it it works. But take a look at the collisions. The collisions are a little bit messed up. But that's exactly how I wanted the the character to to work. Is when I moved. They, it moved much slower. But now when I hit collide, you can kind of see, oh, it's kind of moving. My character's not moving, so the trees are kind of passing me by. We don't like moving trees. Trees are not supposed to move and pass me by. I'm supposed to pass by trees. So what I need to do is I need to, whenever I hit a collision, I need to move my tree back. Just kind of how I did the same character. So what we're going to do here, excuse me, that was a big gun, is I need to find where I hit, which is scroll down, Kyle. That's action one. That is change my Y. That's not what I want, but it's right here. That's going to be uh, me hitting on, my, my character is hitting on its left side or the block's right side. So we're going to be going through each one. I have an error on T because I already use a for each loop. So I need to rename that. I think S for second would be a good um, variable. And I do a few things that really don't work. Um, and actually, no, I do a few things that work, but and a few things that don't work. So this is where it gets a little choppy, and I'll try to explain what's going on here. So I first think, hey, let's do move left. Okay. That's not really what I want to do. I want to get the distance uh, of how how much my character has changed. Be, uh, this way I can move my character back that much. So I'm going to do create a float called distance. If I could spell float. Float. There we go. Float distance. And it's going to be equal to the player 1's starting x point. So player 1 dot get hitbox. Get it where it was dot get x minus the uh, the um, the chain the my new position of x so that should get me delta or distance or delta x so we're gonna get that copy that in paste and put the semicolon so that's my distance and then I'm going to instead of move move left but I'll, I'll put those back in just a second Yep, there you go. See, I told you I put it back. And I'm going to change that to actions. Dot action. And I don't really care about the type. The action is I'm going to put the distance there. So I'm going to pass the distance over. And then I'm going to do zero. Or, nope, it's not. Zero. Good. So I have that. So I have the distance in there. So I'm going to go into the tree. And this is actually um, where I kind of messed up. Um, one thing that I did not do when I went into action is I ended up moving the, char the character by uh, um, the distance or the ch or float x. And I didn't mean to do that because I didn't. Uh, the tree moves at half the speed of the um, of the character. So I've been moving the character so much, then I didn't take that in consideration. So um, the action is actually pretty correct, except for one thing. So I'm going to get the x position minus x, y, or the current y position, and leaving that there. If I just did divide by 2, it would work perfectly. So instead, you now you get to watch maybe like one test of it breaking. Um, and then I tacked on another video at the end. So let's make sure. See, I told you, since I didn't do the divide by 2, you can see the, 
see the thing go much, much further. So that's not what we wanted to do. I think I'm supposed to do plus. I'm not quite sure. I think that's what I was supposed to do. Doop, jump. That was the side. And now it's going a lot faster. So this is when I gave up on the video and then I ended up uh, um, trying to find the find the fix. So I'm making sure. Yeah, I'm really, really close to that. So pretty much I said, hey, I'm going to find the error and I'll get back to you. I promise. So let's wait that out. That's not too bad. Um, but you can kind of see that it's working except for the hitboxes. So now I get back here and that's correct and I'm just kind of explaining hey this was the correct spot here but now I just needed I that's what I should have been doing is a minus x divided by 2 so that gives us half the distance of what we were supposed to go because the trees go half the distance so I believe I show you how to test it out pretty soon let's see keep on talking about hey I was right actually I, I believe I ended up saying something about it in the video um, I just didn't uh, uh, type it out which is kind of silly of my part so anyway um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create the other hitbox and the formula is a little different for distance we still take player one's uh, position uh, or x position but this time we're going to be subtracting it by the formula that's within the uh, the player one action um, class here the reason why we don't want to do the uh, um, the other formula is it doesn't give us the correct position of x so this time we have that we have the distance that we're going to be moving our character and now if we run it doo -doo -doo, See, it, 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 the, the trees kind of stay, I can jump over here, and it's working perfectly. And you can kind of tell that's a really cool effect um, as we keep on going. Now, one effect that you guys should notice is I probably should have moved the trees down a little bit. Um, this way the spikes cover them up, um, or I could be like putting like a brown underneath the uh, um, behind that. Um, either strategy kind of works, um, but yeah. So next time what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys a video of how to how to add points and objectives within the uh, um, within the game and um, hopefully I will have my mic working and ready to go so I don't actually have to do this again where